Hi everyone. It is March 10, 2019. So do you see? Do you see what I see? Okay, you see the microwaves going along the coast into North Carolina, uh, along the South Carolina coast. But do you see all of these blue circles that are pulsating? I am going to be reading from a military document, the U.S. Army Ordnance, um, I don't know, Missile Command, the effects, the biological effects of radar. But before I get into that, I want to thank everyone for leaving comments, telling us what is going on in your area. Wow, this winter has been hell for a lot. Gray, no sun. Uh, snow, magnificent snow, Minnesota, uh, Michigan, um, Maine, though I just heard from a Maine subscriber who I just wanted to reach into my Skype screen and slap because she has been saying that she has been experiencing a lot of sunny days. Well, not here in South Carolina. You see all of these yellow, that uh, yellow what? Blue. Hello? Okay, well, there are cognitive effects of these frequencies that we are saturated in. Um, the straight lines that you see, the fanned out blue, uh, those are the extremely low frequencies. We have been experiencing a tremendous amount of intense frequencies going on. in, well, the southeast in particular. By the way, I tried to find some information about that snow that you were supposed to get up north, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, I think they were calling for snow in Maine. Can't find any, so could you please leave a comment? Did you guys get hit with an awful lot of snow again? Um, what you wrote in... If I can recall correctly, the only person who said that they were experiencing snow in the comment section was someone from West Virginia. Outside of that, did I say snow? I meant sun. All right. <laughs> Um, I would stop this video and start another one. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, let me be an example of what these frequencies can do to your brain. Okay, so this is an extremely low frequency. You can, they have a range, of, a very long range, like 300 miles. But it affects life, guys, and clearly... Now it's affecting a lot of you. Um, I think that one I showed you. I just want to show you that for the past three days, these Doppler radar stations have been sending out very powerful frequencies. Very powerful frequencies. And I've spoken to some subscribers who have said, well, in the Dallas area, experiencing, you know, a lot of pain. She said that, um, and it was at a time when Doppler radar was really um, off the charts. She said everybody in her family woke up at the exact same time, I think like 2.30 in the morning. But let me show you, <laughs> it's really unbelievable. This was, um, on the 6th. So you've got a lot of very powerful frequencies being set off. Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas on the 6th. But it's been going now. Um, well, let's just check it out right now. And you don't see too much happening. What you do see is this storm sure was flying fast. 
it's like uh, in the Atlantic right now. So I know that there were tornadoes again in Alabama that, yeah, caused a little bit of damage. I say a little bit because the person who experienced the damage is not a little bit to them. But comparatively speaking, certainly with the tornado last weekend, uh, they weren't as extreme. Um, I've heard from a lot of people, Tennessee uh, and other areas saying that yeah, you got a little heavy rain or maybe a thunderstorm that came and went, but nothing like they were reporting once again. So it's very hard to determine based on mainstream media and these sites uh, what is going on. Oh, powerful. Wyoming. Okie dokie. What's happening in Wyoming? I've never seen, I've never seen this signature before. Something's happening. You know, I just see that and my eyes go a little nuts. So powerful frequencies happening down here, Southern California. Um, here you have a extremely low frequency hit into Nevada, um, crossing Arizona. So this is right now, and I want to show you what it was like at late last night, which I'm showing you this because it was an obvious signature of weather manipulated or um, created and or look at this tail still in Texas I've shown you many videos with there is a tail to these storms that are either in Texas or the Gulf of Mexico and look how the frequencies create this elongated tail of what looks like precipitation but it's probably not. Okay, this was at uh, just before 10 o'clock last night. 10 o'clock? No. Sorry. 8 o'clock. Last night. Look at this magnificent thousand plus mile storm once again. They seem to have a particular pattern, these storms, going right on into Canada, but that tail <laughs> it just stays, you know, uh, it's like the storms just get bigger and bigger and bigger. They're not really moving. Sorry, that was, uh, they're not really moving. They just grow and grow and grow and grow. But they stay, you know, they're still down here in, in Texas. All right. Um, yeah. You see all of this, the gray and the blue. These are our Doppler radar stations. They are active. I'm going to say this again. To those who think they're active, of course, because they're tracking planes. Please, if that were the case, they would be active always. Why are they sometimes active and sometimes not? Why are they just active in a certain region of the country and not in others. Please. All right. Let me get to the radar effects. Uh, this is from the effects of radar on the human body. It was decades ago. I can't read. I think it's 62, 1962. Not sure. 
I can't read that. Um, U.S. Army Ordnance Missile Command. If you want to know the exact date, click on the link below and you will find this study. Our military, our government knows what these frequencies are doing. But when I am reading this, think about the Doppler radar when they are creating or when they're in use, especially when they're uh, modifying, manipulating, or creating storms, do you think that they're turning off the cell towers? The frequencies coming from the Gwen towers, from the cell towers, from your Wi-Fi, from your smart meter, from your gadgets? No. This is an addition. It's a dangerous addition to all of the frequencies that we are saturated in. So when you see these signatures with these pulsating frequencies, pulsating radar, extremely low frequencies, in these areas, you know the environment has been made even more dangerous. Okay. Uh, what are the effects? Well, increasing use of radar and other microwave generating equipment by the military services and the ever increasing power of such equipment has made evident the need for a single source of information on the effects of radio frequency radiation on the body. The U.S. Army, a long time ago, uh, published a manual microwave radiation hazards well it was entitled hazards to health from microwave energy and they're telling us there's no hazards it's perfectly safe just like vaccines and everything perfectly safe genetically modified food we're in trouble the environment that we now live is extremely dangerous not only to our physical health, but also our overall, all, overall well-being, our emotions, our uh, cognitive capacities. You know, so many of you have left comments, and I'd say that the number three, the top three uh, symptoms that so many of you are experiencing exhaustion, headaches, sleep disturbance. So the U.S. Army titled that manual Hazards to Health from Microwave Energy. You know, even if you're not in an area where these radars, Doppler radar, have been shooting out powerful frequencies, intense frequencies, you're still getting it from the Wi-Fi that you may still have in your home and you might want to rethink that Wi-Fi um, but you're getting it from your smart meter and the cell towers in your area and the Gwen towers in your area both radar and communication systems may produce hazardous electromagnetic power densities characterized by pulsed operation and scanning antenna beams pulsating frequencies are especially dangerous um, I We'll link below to this. I'm not going to read everything, but miscellaneous observations, relatively low frequency electromagnetic fields generate sonic and ultrasonic oscillations in living organisms. Ultrasound. You know, those sonic weapons that um, are embassy personnel in Cuba, they experiencing symptoms. Also, in China, these extremely low frequencies are sonic weapons. And what did they find? Our cells deteriorate when these extremely low frequencies are being set off. Subjects exposed to microwave radiation exhibited a wide variety of symptoms. Most common complaints, headache, fatigue, perspiring, dizziness, menstrual disorders, irritability, agitation, tension, 
drowsiness, sleeplessness, depression, anxiety, forgetfulness, and lack of concentration. You can experience that from microwave and, uh, um, frequencies coming from cell towers, the extremely low frequencies coming from Gwen towers, but then add all of the Doppler radar stations that suddenly start pulsating powerful intense frequencies. Well, you've got the perfect storm to lay people out. Other problems measuring human irradiation, not now this is important. So you can have one person living in the same home. One person is greatly affected by the frequencies and everybody else in the home is asymptomatic. How could that be? And unfortunately those who are not symptomatic generally judge the person who is symptomatic because they have that kind of thinking. My experience is everybody's experience. How narcissistic can you be? There are so many factors that contribute to one's sensitivity uh, and that same person in the exact same home not having any sensitivity. However, the cumulative effects eventually they will go over into the symptomatic cat category with these frequencies. But this is very important. This is one of the reasons why one person can experience symptoms and the other person can't. Not every subject is affected by radiation to the same extent. Frequency of the radiation is also an important factor. At some frequencies, people with thick layers of subcutaneous fat absorb radiation readily, while at other frequencies, the fat acts as a virtual insulator. Ultra high frequencies pass through the body and can heat internal body tissues, but layers of fat will obstruct the radiation. Uh, there was an article in 1957 talking about a man who was brought to death by radar. Uh, the article was a case report, the death of a man he stood in the direct beam of a radar transmitter. Think about all of those birds, boom, falling out of the sky. It's a mystery why they died. Um, they may very well have gotten hit with a powerful frequency beam. Uh, but this man, he had experienced within a few seconds a sensation of heat. The heat became intolerable in less than a minute and he moved away from the antenna. Think about also 5G, the active denial system in which they can hit people with the 5G energy beam. They'll heat up, they'll try to move away, but depending on duration and power, they may be brought to death. But within 30 minutes, this man experienced acute uh, abdominal pain and vomiting. He died within 10 days from inflammation of the intestines attributed to the destructive heat generated by the radio beam. Um, there was an Italian physician, he performing experiments back in the 1920s, and he observed, absorbed, observed, wow changes in brain wave patterns. He was able to produce hallucinations in only highly suggestible individuals. Well, uh, now they can produce hallucinations in all of us. Um, behavior of subjects during exposure. Last year there was a New York Times article and this was brought about during the time when our uh, embassy workers, personnel down in Cuba were experiencing symptoms due to what was a sonic attack. Um, a lot of mainstream media articles coming out about that, but New York Times had an article about the non-lethal weapons used by our military and how the Navy sought to paralyze. They have these weapons and they can paralyze. Uh, decades ago they knew based on their experiments with animals, they could bring about an awful lot of biological effects and responses from these animals. Animals displayed arousal and drowsiness, drowsy periods, they were motionless, uh, they kept the whole body in a fixed position, 
within 60 seconds of initiation of the exposure, um, they would have these staring, wide, fixed gazes. They were able to bring about agitation, rapid side-to-side -side head movements. Movements often ceased abruptly, and the animal would be quiet and unresponsive to touch pain, light, and sometimes sound stimuli. Uh, three animals were deeply anesthetized with phenobarbital. They were unresponsive to pinching of the uh, uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, I have literally forgotten how to pronounce this. Scary. It is scary. Um, I have been experiencing things, cognitive experiences that I don't understand. Um, but it is scary because, well, when you think about the exponential increase in people who have dementia, who are losing their faculties, so many people forgetting things at a young age, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, our environment is very dangerous now. Anyway, uh, they could, by alternating, switching the transmitter on and off, they could bring these animals to a state of arousal and relaxation in a 20 second cycle. They were able to create puppets of these animals a puppet on the end of a string. Uh, General Electric, uh, A. H. Frey, Frey was able to, uh, he discovered the tinnitus, the knocking around or the buzzing that you hear in your head. Um, but many of you left comments saying that the buzzing has gotten very, very loud and it is loud during the storms because they are increasing the use of frequencies to bring about these storms. Fillings in the teeth were not implicated. Okay. Um, many have also left comments. Well, a few have left comments saying that they experience pain in their teeth. The metal, the mercury, which if you have money, get rid of that mercury because it's leaching into your body. Um, very dangerous. But I have experienced what feels like, you know, I'm chewing on tinfoil. You, you're getting hit with microwaves, the tooth, the metal in your in your mouth is a conductor of these frequencies. They're like an antenna. Any metal that you have within your body, metal that you're wearing, jewelry, uh, metal, uh, the underwire bra, the buckle on your belt, all of it is pulling frequencies more intensely into your body. So, irradiation of the head of a monkey. Monkey was fastened in a chair. I, look, I read these and I'm... Uh, I'm not someone... I have a... My brain is visual. When I'm reading, I can see what I'm reading. I don't like this. Uh, these experiments on all of these animals, bringing them to a point of suffering, death. I mean, but it's all... It's all in the name of science, Carol, and learning. You know, it benefits the two-legged. I am so sick of the two-legged. The, the suffering brought about by the two-legged is really pretty intense. Anyway, this monkey was fastened in a chair in a sitting position inside a drum-shaped cage, which served as a resonating cavity to greatly strengthen the electromagnetic energy within the cage. A radio antenna fitted to the top of the cage pointed toward the monkey's head in line with his brain stem. The central vital portion of the brain, the antenna was excited with ultra high frequencies. And guess what you get from radar stations? High frequencies. Uh, what happened? When the transmitter was turned on, the monkey was apparently unaffected for a few seconds. Then it became drowsy. Uh, then it became agitated, moving its head from side to side. In another minute, there appeared unmistakable signs 
of some impending disturbance in the vital centers of the brain, thrown into a major convulsion a few seconds before death occurred. Examination of the brains revealed no pathological cause of death. How many people are being brought to death due to these frequencies? And if they have an autopsy, well, they can't see. That's why these frequencies are so dangerous. They are using them as weapons. They're invisible. And upon autopsy, you may not even see any reason for why this person was brought to death. But very important, the monkeys that were cut short of death showed symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Get it? OK, we have an exponential increase in people with MS and Parkinson's, dementia. Why? Look at our environment now with all of these frequencies. Behavior of subjects during exposure, arousal, drowsiness, motionless, whole body in a fixed position, agitation, uh, movements. They could bring them about or they could stop them abruptly. Um, yeah, puppets on the end of the string. That was a repeat, I'm sorry. So, eye signs. Continued exposure, the animal would develop sagging upper eyelids of both eyes. I will tell you that I have had sag sagging upper eyelids. Several times, I've noticed that my left eyelid is sagging down. Um, suddenly, the animal would open his eyes, stare upward. The pupils were usually small and equal. Eyes would begin to move independently. Pupils would dilate. Often, one pupil would be larger than the other. Some instances, um, it would lose its roundness. Rapid involuntary eye uh, oscillation of the eyeballs. Rapid blinking, but rapid involuntary oscillation of the eyeballs. Vertigo, dizziness. The autonomic changes, skin of the face would often become flushed and then pale. The nose often became pink and the respiratory rate increased. Further exposure, rapid blinking progressed to clonic movements of the eyes, bilateral clonic movements of the other facial muscles, a severe grimace which pulled back the lips, lips of the teeth, which means that animal was really suffering, uh, clonic flexion of the neck, symmetrical clonic movements of the upper extremities, trunk, lower extremities, and guess what? That animal was brought to a seizure. The rapid blinking and the grimace, that was the onset of the seizure. You think about all of the people having seizures, the dogs, the cats, animals having seizures, motor loss, paralysis of all four limbs, Weakness of the upper extremities, inability to coordinate voluntary muscular movements, develop lesions of the occipital muscles and the overlying skin. One animal developed a right facial weakness. Um, temperatures in the head, they could increase the temperatures in the head of 10 dogs with microwaves. Irradiation of the heads of rats. Signs of intoxication, obvious signs of microwave effects were observed. The rat was immediately aware of some type of pain stimulus, but that was through the invisible frequencies. So think about all of the people who are in chronic physical pain today, and they're taking drugs to alleviate that pain. Okay, these rats... Squealing, struggling within 15 to 25 seconds, um, obvious signs of pain. They were trying to move away from the frequencies that were causing the pain. They experienced first, second, and third degree burns on their skin. Most conspicuous effect was stimulation of the central nervous system with muscle spasms, tremors, and chronic convulsions. The tail stood up almost straight. Periods of central stimulation alternated with periods of depression. The most sensitive, the eye and testes, 
you boys and men, your testes are being irradiated. I see still these people, they, the, the men, they slip their cell phone right smack into their pocket, their pants pocket. <sighs> well, uh, damage to the endocrine chain uh, with 10 minute exposure, damage to the pituitary, pituitary gland. Uh, damage to the testicle tissues, failure of the tissue to fully respond to the hormone being elaborated. Funny we have a fertility crisis. Irradiation of the eye. The eye is particularly sens uh, susceptible to damage. Cataracts. Cataracts. Fluid contained in the eyeball reacts to heat. So we're all staring at computer screens. And we've got these cell phone towers all over the place. And we're using our cell phones. And boy, do we bring them close to our face. The frequencies coming from all of our gadgets, the Wi-Fi in our home, our eyeballs are being fried like an egg. And cataracts. Well, cataracts are exponentially increasing. And when 5G comes about, You'll see our population wearing eyeglasses. And more and more children, by the way. More and more children are having to go where uh, they now have to wear eyeglasses. And think about all of the children who are subjected to these uh, gadgets. Defense Intelligence Agency, biological effects of electromagnetic radiation. Well, they essentially talk about the extremely low frequencies, uh, their influence on biological systems. Much concern has arisen about extremely low frequencies, sonic weapons. Studies have suggested possible adverse effects on human health, cancer, reproduction, fertility crisis happening not just in our country but in other countries there's a similarity they noticed between microwave radiation and drugs regarding their effects on biological systems and guess what microwave frequencies can affect the drugs that you're taking and for some drugs they can make your condition you're thinking you're taking medication to cure or uh, keep stable the con medical issue that you have and but you're in a home with Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi, the microwave frequencies coming from that pulsating into your body is affecting the medication that you are taking. Um, and with one, and I posted a video on this, it actually, you're taking medication thinking you're curbing or curing your condition and it's making your condition worse because of the frequencies and the effects of microwaves on brain tissue chemistry functions oh my god um, body weight um, is one of the factors in whether or not somebody's going to be sensitive or not but here actual or potential effects of extremely low frequency radio frequency microwave radiation on enhancing violence and homicide, accelerating aging of human, animal, or plant cells. And I'll find these studies and you can read them. Yep, we are destroying ourselves. And very important here, the evidence that electromagnetic fields and radiation and electromagnetic um, frequencies are genotoxic. It means that exposure to any electromagnetic fields and radiation will enhance cell death, which will increase aging, the process of aging. Uh, it reduces melatonin, which limits the body's ability to scavenge for those free radicals and therefore contributes to enhance cell death and cancer rates. Melatonin is also necessary for a healthy immune system. Reduced melatonin is also associated with depression and suicide and therefore is likely to be associated with violence of homicide. Uh, since electromagnetic radiation damages the DN D 
DNA reduces melatonin. It is scientifically logical that it also enhances many of the natural aging processes, processes in plants, in animals, and people. We are now experiencing unnatural frequencies brought about by man at intensities from a thousand to many billion times higher. Well, that can only uh, have a detrimental effect, effect, and many studies have shown it is causing adverse health effects, including cancer, heart disease, sleep disturbance, depression, suicide, anger, rage, violence, homicide, neurological disease, and mortality. So I will link below to everything. Thank you for um, telling us what was happening in your area in terms of the weather. Um, and please, if anything, you know, happened in your area, let us know. But let us know, have you been experiencing more symptoms in the last couple of days with these frequencies coming out of our Doppler radar, which absolutely, it has been pretty intense for several days, you know, with all of this addition, the addition of dangerous frequencies. Ciao, guys.